yeah, we were talking about that kind of fearlessness you have when you don't, you don't, you don't really know what the risks are at the beginning, so you, no. which is such a plus. you haven't got a clue, you and you just charge forward, and suddenly you're hugely famous, mm. and you've traded so many things away for that fame, mm. and basically that's what the first song on my album's about. I traded fame for love without a second thought It all became a silly game Some things cannot be bought mm. But I didn't have any friends when I lived in the Star Motel. Um, so it was very lonely, it was a very lonely time. Mm. So where are we going to do now? We're going to the deli. Yeah, well, there's a deli downstairs, which um, they were very kind to me. They kind of, if I didn't have the cash, they'd give me food and I could pay them, like, say, the end of the week. Mm. And that's where I budgeted out my, my meals every day, mm. basically. I had a choice between salted peanuts and a can of, you know, like a container of yogurt, or I had a large bag of cheese popcorn and um, mm. cranberry juice. It was very yummy, I have to say. Well, I suppose like all young people, you, know, you ate like once every two days anyway. Um, mm. No, I ate every day. I was quite fond of eating, mm. as you could tell by my zoftic figure at the time. <laughs> Don't call me chunky, Rupert. <laughs> my earliest memories of meeting Madonna, I was working in a club called Dance and Tyrion in about 1982, 83. Most of the time when I would meet, meet her out at club, she was on the dance floor. It would be like, you know, picking up boys and like, this one is cute, or this. Even though she wasn't from the streets in New York, she had this very sort of street energy. And we just had a great time running around together. We're gonna go to the deli that I used to basically budget myself out to a dollar a day. Hello. So, it's kind of a minimalist deli, really. It's a smelly deli. It's a smelly deli. So, okay, so basically what I do is I'd come over here. Um, these. Actually, well, prices have gone up, but I'd get a bag of peanuts, which were about 10 cents cheaper back in those days. And uh, then I'd come over here and get some um, yogurt. But do you guys still have yogurt? Yeah. You do? Oh, let's check it out. Let's check out the yogurt stand. <laughs> There's the cheese. Um... Shh, don't jump the gun. OK, yeah, so you know, I got my proteins in. I had peanuts. I had yogurt, and then every other day I would have strictly carbs and I'd get a gigantic bag of cheese popcorn. But look, oh, I used to get a bag that was four times the size for about 60 cents, okay? Inflation, what are you gonna do? Anyway, so things haven't changed much really. Hi, you guys. Hello. Do you remember me? Yeah. No, but do you remember me from when I used to live down the street? I swear you're not just saying that? Okay, who am I? <laughs> oh, you know. No, she doesn't. I just want to know something. Was I nice when I was younger? Did I have good manners? Yes. Oh. Okay, good. See? I had good manners. Yeah, I got a question to you, Madame. Would you be interested to buy you your nude photos? I got your nude photos about 20 years ago when you were 17 years old. Um, no thanks. I mean, I mean, maybe they're worth something. Nude photographs yeah, of me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get them for free. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when you, when, when, when you, when you, before I actually, you know, when you. Before I hit the big time? Yeah. 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 Are those them? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you know, should hold on. I mean, listen, if you ever need them. to make some bucks, you, yeah, that's, you could that's always what, sell them. Well, that's what I was thinking, you know, maybe. Well, you know, I, listen, if I want to see me naked, I'll just see the mirror. I know that, but I'm saying, you know, maybe. <laughs> can you get that for me, honey? I'm flat broke. All right, so that's like the deli experience. Oh, those were the good old days. Anyway, let's talk about the new spiritual you. What do you feel about that? The new spiritual me? Mm. I mean, I don't know about here, but in Europe, they've segued off your last catchphrase title, which was the material girl. Oh, please, that was like 100 years ago. I'm so sick of being called the material girl. Well, I know, but now, well, you're not anymore. Yeah, but now what? You're the spiritual finger symbol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of searching for my own spirituality. So, but I think it kind of trivializes what I'm doing to say, you know, the new spiritual Madonna. I mean, what was I up until now, like a heathen, you know? Express yourself, don't repress yourself. I thought that we would swing by the apartment that I had the um, nude photographs taken that ended up being in Playboy magazine. Okay, see, 
right here, number 35. Right. It's actually a nice door, don't you think? Do you have any contact with him afterwards when they, when they came out? No. Did you think about it? What, writing him a letter? Screaming at him. I wanted to rip his face off. But, you know, I, mean, I didn't know how to reach him. And, you know, at the end of the day, the damage was already done. What was I gonna, what was I gonna do? His kneecap's broken or something. Oh, no. I'm not that Italian. I think we should go down to Fourth and B. Once I moved down here, this is when I really started to like enjoy myself. You know, started to have a circle of friends, and well, things were looking up, and I was about to get a record deal. And... I was in a hospital room when I heard the one song, "Everybody" by Madonna, which she co-wrote. Um, and I, I loved it. She was there to get a deal, and she got one. I mean, she couldn't have cared at that point if I was laying in a coffin as long as my hand was out and I could, you know, sign. It's true. I did walk in there with, like, a big boom box and my demo tape, you know, and my big, like, rag tied on my head. And that's my first favorite story, because it's so kind of legendary, that story. And he signed you straight away like that? Yeah. As soon as he met me and heard my, my demo, he signed me. We're coming up in my apartment. Okay, so, yeah, it's right over there. You want to get out? Yeah. Okay, so basically, when I lived here, there was a lot of um, drugs being sold on the street. So there were kids everywhere that were kind of like lookouts for all the drug dealers. And every time the cops would drive by, they would whistle this certain whistle. And then, you know, everybody would know there was a cop. So, and a couple of the kids that were lookouts were um, it lived in my building, actually. I befriended them. So they kind of protected me, and they'd walk me down the street and stuff at night. They were really sweet and basically ruined my love life because they would also never let my boyfriends get up the stairs without robbing them at knife. Really? Yeah, knife point. Um, so this is my building, like two, three, four, six, yes. Notice the heart shape on the door. And um, you want to go in? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, these doors are so heavy. This hallway's been completely refurbished. I just want to point that out. Hello. John, hi. I'm just showing my friend Rupert my old apartment building. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Can we go upstairs? Um, or no? Well, Do you remember which floor I used to live on? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, <laughs> the fourth, I believe. The fourth floor, floor, yeah, exactly. Can we come in and look around? You sure we're not, you know, barging in on anything? No? OK, good. Hi. Hi, Madonna. Oh, hello. How are you? What's yes. your name? Fabienne. Fabienne, I love that name. Fabienne? We love you. Oh, sweet. God, this is just exactly like my apartment. I had the same stove. And look, this is totally the exact layout of my apartment. And then my bedroom was over there, and the living room was there. But I actually had all my um, synthesizers set up in there when I was doing recordings and stuff. So here's the bathroom. How long have you guys lived here? I lived here for a very long time. I, I believe you know my father. His name was Manuel Pacheco. Manuel? A long, long time ago. What, was he, the, did, did, did he, was he in this apartment? Yes, he was. Oh, he was? Let yeah, me see. Yes, a when he was younger. Oh, yeah, I remember him. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, oh, my dad beautiful. was an antique collector and yes, so Judas. I, so I, I can't remember. I think I lived here for a couple of years in this building. Right. And then, um, my, actually, my apartment got robbed. Did you know that? Yeah, I think I what? do. Um, I used to know Sleep and yeah. Amani yeah. and Eddie and yeah. all those guys. Johnny? And, yes, Johnny. Yeah, yeah I yeah. remember all of Bad that. boy Johnny. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so in that room, in my apartment, so right. I had all my, my um, synthesizers all stacked up in my 404 drum machine, very important and my tape player, and that's where I did all of my original recordings. And I used to let all those kids I was telling you about on the streets right. come in and play music in here. And um, I guess one of them decided to turn on me. Wow. And they broke in when I wasn't here one night, and they took all of my music equipment. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then I had to leave. And I thought they were my friends. It was kind of depressing. I was really pissed off about all those good synths they stole, though, I must admit. Well, you've got a few more along the way. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. I made up for it. All right, thanks, you guys. Thanks for Thank you. It was really generous I, I, of you. I want to give you something just in case. Um, I'd love to do some beautiful work for you.
know, in the future. My cat, he loves to sit on his butt a lot, so. <laughs> anyway. We need a cat for anything. <laughs> okay, what's your name again? Cindy. Cindy, okay. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you, Cindy. Beautiful. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Nice Thanks for letting us come in. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. She was actually quite beautiful, didn't She's you think? Beautiful. And, beautiful. and she had a lovely personality, too. For inspiration. This is the stoop that um, I got kind of got discovered on. Right. I was sitting out here with um, with um, two of the kids that lived in the building, and it was just a hot summer day, and this photographer comes walking down the street and asked us if he could take our photograph. And we said, yeah. And he asked me for my phone number as well. And I gave it to him. And on the next day, he, like a couple days later, he rang me up and he said that his mother wanted to meet me. And it turns out that his mother was a casting director and she worked with Martin Scorsese. And she was also really good friends with Barbara Streisand. So that's kind of how I got into the whole acting thing. And that's what led to my audition for Desperately Seeking Putin. And the rest is history. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the stoop, this is the apartment building, and uh, this is the street where it all happened. Well, if you wonder if you'd been inside, like practicing on your synths when the photographer came by, everything would have been different. Could have been. You know, I mean, certainly for my movie career, it would have been different. It's so weird, though. Totally, isn't it? I know. But I mean, there are no accidents, I yeah. really believe that. Yes, I do too. So, anyway, there's a coffee shop around the corner. And uh, you want to go there and get something to eat? We could talk. Okay. I never thought uh, Madonna's success was surprising or amazing or a fluke or anything. And I remember the first time that I went on tour with her is when I realized really how famous she was. And it was, you know, it's not something I really ever thought about because I don't really give a shit. She was my friend. Am I allowed to curse? I remember Madonna uh, back in the day when she used to wear really short shorts and little frilly tops and uh, ride her roller skates down each street with a boombox on her shoulder. She had like really wild hair on this porcelain skin and she had on some kind of like outfit that was had many layers and a lot going on. She moves so many things in fashion. She moves so many things in a lot of things. She's a transcendent. Cindy's given us her picture. What, what's that? And that's a picture of her cat. In case oh. her cat, in case we need a cat for anything. <laughs> Maybe I'll put her in my next video. Johnny, Johnny cat. <laughs> oh. That's really sweet. So um, now we're going to a coffee shop around the corner. Right. It's been around for ages, but it's kind of changed. Like it used to be a bit more rundown and very dinerish, and now it's become a mat like a vegetarian. Squatters. Oh, it's actually still Squatter Central. Yeah, exactly. Hi, how are you? Can we still order something to yeah. Where do you want to sit? Where do you want to sit? Yeah. I remember seeing an interview with you, like when you did Bedtime Stories, I think it was, when you said it was the most unhappy. Was it Bedtime Stories you hated making? The album? Mm. Yeah, that was a really hard record for me to make because I it was the first time that I'd ever. Um, worked with four producers on one record and basically it was just there was no I worked with four different people and there wasn't any it was really hard for me to sort of glue the sound together and make one kind of theme happen through the music sonically and lyrically Today. It seems like now you kind of, um, you look like you're kind of enjoying the moment and everything much more. Is that true? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I've gotten much better at choosing projects and work to do that I'm actually going to enjoy instead of, um... Thrashing yourself. Thrashing myself, exactly. So how did that relate to Ray of Light? Was that, was that a, uh, a... I have to say, making that album was the most fun I've ever had in a studio. The most fun. Really? Why was that, do you think? Um, well, first of all, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm a much happier person. Right. And just having my daughter come to the studio every day uh, was, so, was such an inspiration. So that was a huge difference. And also, I was working, William Orbit isn't, um, 
he's a really kind of unconventional musician to work with. He works more with like computers and Pro Tools and samples and synths. And I was used to working with more classically trained musicians. So it, it really was a sort of no throw the rules out the window type of record making for me. And we'd go in there every day. And I always had plans because I'm the organized person in, in, in the group. But, but oftentimes I'd get to the end of the day and we, we wouldn't really have accomplished much, but we'd get sort of like, we get textures. Right. We just get some textures for a song, and in the past that would have freaked me out. Like I, I had this, I have this work ethic, you know. I've got right. to be really super productive, and I've got to have something done every day. And at the end of the day, I want to have a song written. What's it called? Trance music, do you think? What's, what's what called? Well, you know, everything's called my a record. name. Yeah, what type of music is it? Well, everyone's calling my record electronica, so right. I guess that's what it is to a certain extent. But personally, I mean, I think the roots of electronica are, um, is dance, dance music. music right, house, sure. disco, whatever. I mean, that's where it all began. <coughs> so I don't know why people have such a snooty attitude about, you know, there's a lot of purists who would listen to my record and say, oh, this isn't electronica or trance or anything, right. you know? Um, you know, what it is, is it's a pop record, but there is a lot of electronic music in it. And I like that sort of trancey ambient feeling, and I like the sound that William has. The one thing that I always was angry and upset about was that people never really gave Madonna credit for her insight into music and her sincerity as far as R&B and that vibe is concerned. I'd been through several years of just basically having this kicked out of me for any number of reasons, and I just thought, you know, what am I doing this for? If you only watch one thing on VH1 on Saturday, watch this. And that's Saturday on VH1. Two pints of art, please. That's our Irish. Oh, yeah. Yep. Brewed to an original 4.3% Irish recipe. Well? Ah, it tastes great to me. Well, that's all right, then.